<laughs> hey there, folks. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports and to part three of my Halloween 2015 marathon. Now, for the past several days, I've been having a hard time finding a film to blog. And, well, I decided to skip Helen back this year for two reasons. One, the folks at the Vocational Visions program won't allow me to see R-rated movies in theaters anymore. And two, I think it would help if I watched it on DVD so I can get to understand its plot better. So instead... Today's subject is going to be something from Disney. Which one, you ask? Well, not only is it an animated film from the 80s, but it's also to be considered the darkest, scariest, and edgiest. And it's also known by many as the ultimate black sheep of Walt Disney Animation. Released on July 24th, 1985, the movie is... The Black Cauldron. So, let's get started. This is the story of a young man named Tyron, who is an assistant pig keeper with boyish dreams of becoming a great warrior. Henwin, a magical oracle pig, is kidnapped by an evil lord known as the Horn King, who hopes Hen will show him the way to the Black Cauldron, which has the power to create a giant army of unstoppable soldiers. With the aid of Princess Ilonwi, an exaggerating minstrel, and a pestering creature named Gurgi, Tyron will try to save Perdane from the Horn King. Tyron and his new friends embark on a quest to find the Black Cauldron before the Horn King can. So, what do I think of this film? Well, in my eyes, this movie is pretty epic. But sadly... This movie didn't do so well in theaters, so it became a, well, a huge bum at the box office. But nowadays, I feel like it has received a cult following thanks to its VHS release in the late 90s, which is how I got introduced to this film in the first place. But to explain more info, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Walt Disney Productions optioned Lloyd Alexander's five-volume series in 1971, and pre-production work began in 1973, when the film rights to Alexander's books were finally obtained. However, actual production did not officially begin until, well, 1980. According to Ollie Johnson, it was he and Frank Thomas that convinced the studio to produce the movie, and that if it had been done properly. For the Black Cauldron, a new way to transfer drawings to cells was invented, called the APT process. But as the APT transfer line art would fade off, or off the, the cells over time, most of the film was done using the xerographic process, which had been in place at Disney since the late 1950s. The Black Cauldron is no well, notable for being Disney's first animated feature film to incorporate the use of computer-generated imagery in its animation for bubbles, a boat, a floating orb of light, and the cauldron itself. Although The Black Cauldron was released a year before The Great Mouse Detective, both movies were in production simultaneously for some time, and the computer graphics for the latter was done first. When the producer, John Hale, heard about what was being done, the possibilities made him excited, and he made the crew from The Great Mouse Detective, well, Project, create some computer animation for his own movie. For other effects, animator Don Paul used live-action footage of dry ice mist to create the steam and smoke coming from out of the cauldron. It is also the first and only animated Disney film to introduce new sound effects with the classic Disney SFX. The film is also no well known for being the first motion picture produced by Walt Disney Company to use the new and widely recognizable Walt Disney Pictures logo, 
which features the white silhouette of the Sleeping Beauty castle in front of a clear blue background. The then new logo replaced the Buena Vista Pictures distribution logo and the Walt Disney Productions Presents title card at the beginning. It also did not feature the The End title card at the film's conclusion. The film is also notable for becoming the first Disney animated feature since Alice in Wonderland to feature closing credits at the film's conclusion. Shortly before the film's release to theaters, Newly appointed Disney Studio Chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg ordered certain scenes from the Black Cauldron to be cut. As a result of the film and the fear that their audience, well, their graphic nature would alienate children and family audiences. Since animated films were generally edited in storyboard form using uh, Leica reels, producer Joe Hale objected to Katzenberg's demands. Katzenberg responded by having the film brought into an edit bay and editing the film himself. Informed what Katzenberg was doing by Hale, Disney CEO Michael Eisner called Katzenberg in his editing office and convinced him to stop. Though he did what Eisner insisted, Katzenberg requested that the film be modified and delayed its scheduled Christmas 1984 release to July 1985 so that the film would be reworked. The film was ultimately cut by 12 minutes, including whole sequences involving the world of the fair folk. Some existing scenes were rewritten and reanimated for continuity. Some of the cut scenes involved the undead Cauldronborn, who are used as the Horn King's army in the final act of the movie. While most of the scenes were seamlessly removed from the film, one particular cut involved a cauldron born slicing, well, killing a person by slicing his neck, and another one killing another person by slicing his torso created a rather recognizable laugh because the removal of the scene creates a jump in the film's soundtrack. Other deleted scenes are mostly shots of graphic violence, such as Taran fighting his way out of the Horn King's palace as well as one of the king's henchmen being dissolved by mist. Now, I don't have that much else to say, but while most of the film is pretty dark, the animation still looks great for a 1980s animated Disney film. So, now that we're done with Mustang Notes, let's move on to the cast of this movie. Our main hero, Taran, is voiced by Grant Bardsley. Now, as mentioned before, Taran is an assistant pig keeper who wants to be a warrior someday. Now, in my opinion, Taran is a great character. I mean, he's brave and responsible, but there are times that where he can be a bit stubborn, boastful, or distracted at times. Next we have Henwin, who in my opinion is a really adorable pig. She may be cuter than Wilbur from Charlotte's Web, but she's equally as cute as Daria's piglets from The Princess and the Pea. She also, well, she has the ability to see the future when her face touches water bowls. Next we come to Princess Elonwi, voiced by Susan Sheridan. remember as the English voice for Princess Sylvia in Muzzy. And, on a sad note, Susan passed away about two months ago. Anyway, you may have heard me talk about her before on my top 11 other Disney princesses list a few months ago. But I'll give you a little recap anyway. When we first see her in the dungeons, she asks Taryn for her help to escape. She says the Horn King kidnapped her because he thought her magic bubble could lead him to the cauldron. Anyway, I find Ilonwi to be a pretty sweet person, and she's pretty good at sewing, too. We also have Fluter Flam, a minstrel voiced by Nigel Hawthorne. 
who would later voice Professor Porter in Disney's Tarzan. In my opinion, Fluter is a funny character, especially when he gets chased by a dungeon dog. He also has a heart that breaks a string whenever he tells a lie. Next we have the mischievous Gurgi, voiced by John Briner, who also voices the grouchy Dolly. Now, I love Gurgi for many reasons. I mean, yes, he can be a bit of a coward, and may seem like a ripoff on Gollum from The Lord of the Rings, but he still makes a great supporting character. And he's pretty friendly. He does help Taran find Henwin twice in the movie. And he does make a, well, a heroic sacrifice nearing the end. As for Dolly, well, he's a member of the Fair Folk who live underneath a lake. King Idole appoints him to help the group find where the Black Cauldron is hidden, which is in the marshes of Morva. But he doesn't seem to do too much in the movie other than be a cranky grouch. Next we come to the villain of the film, the Horned King, voiced by British actor John Hurt. Who played Ollivander in the Harry Potter film franchise, Felix in Valiant, and narrated the Tigger movie. Now, the Horn King may not be the most well-known Disney villain, but he's certainly the scariest by far. For one thing, he's basically a skeleton with some skin on some parts of him, and has deer antlers on his head. And, like Maleficent, he knows how to make an entrance. Plus, John Hurd's voice makes this guy threatening. His plan is to use the Black Cauldron to bring an army of skeletons or deathless warriors to life, in order to conquer the world. Also, in my opinion, when the skeletons come to life, it's pretty disturbing. And nowadays, they're pretty, well, they're equally as scary as the skeletons from Army of Darkness. Only, they do more compared to the Cauldron Born Army, since their lives end pretty quick thanks to Gurgi. We also have the Horn King's sidekick, the Creeper, voiced by Phil Fundacaro. This guy serves as the Horn King's second in command and likes to, well, shall we say, suck up to the king. But the funniest thing that involve him is when the Horn King strangles him by the neck. Next up are the three witches of Morva, Ordu, Orwen, and Orgosh, voiced by Ida Race Murren, Adele Malice Mori, and Billy May Billy Hayes. Prior to seeing these three, they have been turning people into frogs for food, but since Taran and the gang have been searching for the Black Cauldron in their territory, they are willing to give it to them in exchange for Taran's magical sword that he found in the dungeons. They even tell the gang that the cauldron cannot be destroyed, but its powers can be stopped only if a living is willing to climb into it. And lastly, the narrator is none other than Gandalf himself, John Huston. Need I say more? And now it's time to move on to my final words. Overall, while Disney doesn't really want to talk about this movie too much, The Black Cauldron is still an entertaining film. True, the movie is pretty dark, but the animation is still pretty good, and the acting is still enjoyable, including John Hurt as the Horned King. And while I'm sad that Susan Sheridan is no longer with us, she'll always remain in my heart for voicing one of my favorite other Disney princesses. I wouldn't recommend this movie to little children, 
But if they watch it with their parents, I'm sure they'll enjoy it the same way my sister and I did. So, my rating for this movie will be a 71% out of 100. Well, that's it for tonight, everybody. Be sure to join me next time for my next Halloween blog, because when the time comes, we're going into the world of one of my childhood favorite book franchises. Mustang Power.